In just over an hour, the space shuttle Atlantis is scheduled to dock at the International Space Station, delivering supplies and spare parts in what will be the program's final mission. Joining me now from the Kennedy Space Center, NASA Administrator Charles Bolden, who himself has traveled into orbit four times, commanding two of those missions. Mr. Bolden, thank you so much for being here. I think we've all kind of enjoyed a nostalgic moment watching that last shuttle come up. I think there are more to come when we watch it uh, return to Earth and land. But I want to take you one step forward. Everybody says goodbye to the Atlantis, and it goes to the museum. And the next day, you walk into your office. What are you be going to be working on? Candy, first of all, let me thank you very much for allowing me to, to represent the people of NASA and our contractor team. Uh, and, and let me take an opportunity to thank the incredible shuttle team that has carried us for 30 years uh, through the most awesome program that I think humankind has ever seen. Uh, I'm going to walk into my office tomorrow and, uh, and continue what has been going on for several years now, and that's our effort to develop uh, put the final touches on uh, the development of the next phase of exploration for the nation uh, that will involve development of a heavy lift launch vehicle, a multi-purpose crew vehicle, and also to go to work, uh, as I usually do each week, working with the commercial entities around the country, helping them to promote uh, their capability, American industry's innovative capability, to step in and replace the shuttle in delivering cargo to the International Space Station as early as next year. Uh, let me uh, let you make an educated guess, and, and that is, when do you think the U.S. will <laughs> next send an American into space aboard a U.S. craft of some sort? What year will that be? It, Candy, Ameri American leadership will persist for the foreseeable future. I can guarantee you that. And uh, it, with American innovation and American industry's capability, uh, we are going to demonstrate the capability of taking cargo to orbit uh, early in 2012. So we're months away from that. Uh, we are hopeful of, of starting to ask for proposals from industry uh, early part of next year on a commercial crew vehicle. And I would say we're talking about anywhere from three years to five years after we let the first contract. So between 2014 and 2015, I'm very hopeful that you'll see American astronauts climb back aboard American-produced spacecraft to go to the International Space Station. And not very long after that, uh, start flying uh, uh, some test hops on, on a, a, a NASA-led effort to uh, explore beyond low Earth orbit, go to deep space. Uh, let me uh, read you two headlines that caught my eyes and, and have you uh, comment on them. Uh, as you mentioned, it'll be several years before a, a U.S. astronaut is on uh, a U.S. vessel to even go uh, to the Space Center. And so we are going to be using basically Russians as a taxi. Well, our U.S. astronauts will be on Russian spaceships um, to get there. So here is a headline from the Wall Street Journal. Shuttle's last flight leaves Russia with space monopoly. And then the Daily Beast wrote, Russians win the space race. What's your comment, uh, Candy? There? I don't think I don't think I could I could disagree more with with the headlines, and I won't uh, I won't quibble. But uh, there is no question about our leadership in exploration in space flight. Uh, we have been the leader for many years, for many decades now, and that will that will uh, we will maintain that leadership. Again, Americans are on American-built spacecraft, even as we speak. Uh, as Atlantis approaches the International Space Station, it's got a crew of six. That includes Americans. And for the foreseeable future, at least through 2020, we're going to have American astronauts operating on the International Space Station. You know, previously, uh, the, the administration prior to this one uh, had an opportunity to get us to where we're headed today. Uh, and we, we faltered. Uh, I am very confident that with the president's continued support and the support that I'm anticipating we'll get from Congress, we're going to be able to put Americans on American-built spacecraft uh, produced through American innovation uh, so that in the next five years or so, uh, American astronauts and our partner astronauts are venturing to the International Space Station on those American-built spacecraft. I'm very confident in that. But, what's the, but the, the space station is already there. We've obviously been there many times. We know that U.S. Uh, commercial entities will now build the next vehicle that will get us to that space station. But what is the next big mission? I mean, for 50 years, I think, uh, U.S. school children have sort of looked at, oh, and then we'll go here, and we'll go into orbit, and then we'll go to the moon, and then we'll go to the space station. Where are we going next? 
You know, I, I would encourage the American public to listen to the president. Uh, he has said it on any number of occasions. Uh, if you go all the way back to the 15th of, uh, of April, uh, uh, two years ago, a year ago, when the president was here at the Kennedy Space Center, he talked about his desire to explore, to get beyond low Earth orbit. Just this past Friday after the launch, he sent a, a message of congratulations to my NASA team, and he re-emphasized the fact that he wants us to be on an, have humans near an ast on, an, on or near an asteroid in 2025, and he wants us to be uh, in Martian orbit with the intent of landing uh, in the 2030s. Those are two very well-defined destinations that we're really working hard on. We have got to, though, though, Candy, we've got to make sure that everybody has the same sense of urgency that my NASA team has right now. American contractors are anxious to get on with this, and we're going to do that. So we're going to retain our leadership. We're going to uh, facilitate the success of commercial entities to take our astronauts on American-built, American-designed um, vehicles that come from American innovation so that we can explore deep space. And the president has set the goals, an asteroid in 2025, Mars in 2030s. I, I can't get any more, any more definitive than that. We are in budget-cutting times. Uh, NASA certainly goes into a bit of a lull, even though if you're working on this, uh, the, the asteroid and the, and the trip into deep space. Why is it that you are not vulnerable to budget cuts? What would we lose if uh, NASA's budget is cut further? Candy, there are three principles, or th three, uh, three principles on which I have told my entire NASA team and my contractors that we'll always function. One is affordability, the other is sustainability, and the other one is, is reasonability, or does it make sense? Uh, we have a plan for the future. We have a plan to explore. Should Congress decide uh, and the president agree that we're going to cut back on our spending, it will extend the amount of time that it takes us to realize the goals that the president has set for us. It will extend the amount of time that's necessary for me to close the gap between the last shuttle flight, this flight of Atlantis, and the first time we're able to put American astronauts into orbit on American-built spacecraft. But I am, Candy, my team is dedicated. We're not backing down. Uh, it may take us a little bit longer if we get budget cuts, but I'm not anticipating that. I'm working on a 2010 uh, authorization bill that set out a very clear path for me. It was supported uh, by unanimous vote, bipartisan support in the Congress, signed into law by the president. The 2011 continuing resolution that under which we work right now is going to fund this. So, okay. uh, you know, if we get funding cuts, you know where we are, but we'll make <laughs> things happen.